Hello lovelies, I am the Fragnostic and welcome to the third Too Sick to Play, a quadrilogy of gaming retrospectives from my recent encounter with stomach flu and bronchitis, where I found myself sadly too atrociously sick to commentate. The final part, Layers of Fear, will be with you soon, but for tonight's play we're running with something a little different. Rubber and Lead isn't the sort of game I'd normally review on the channel. Sounds like the newspaper headlines were gunfight in a sex dungeon is actually a top-down vehicular combat game. No, the reason I'm reviewing this is that it's my first request from a developer who has also supplied the game. I want to be nice and upfront about that so that you can judge for yourselves whether my integrity has been compromised. To all other developers watching, I'm more than happy to review your games, but please be aware that although I am grateful for the offer and am not on this occasion going to name and shame, neither this or financial incentives entitle you to a positive review, so proceed with caution. The Fragnostic's integrity is not for sale. Gaming integrity, anyway. Just to be clear, the developer of Rubber and Lead is not guilty of any of the above and has offered his game in good faith. Thank you, sir. Let's muck in. Your opening stage in Rubber and Lead is unavoidably amateur night, where you get a car and a couple of weapons provided for you. Your guns are mounted to the front and rear of the car, with the front shooting directly ahead, and the rear attached to a turret that you can control more accurately with a mouse. You're also capable of laying down oil patches and smoke to dizzy and distract your opponents in the arena, who you're mainly tasked with shooting to death, but are also able to ram into oblivion at the cost of your armour. There's no complex tactics to adhere to in this early stage, just strafe around the other cars, spraying your rear machine guns until everybody else gets blown the fuck up. Passing amateur night will drop enough cash in your back pocket to sort you out with your own car, armour and weapons, which you can do from this pre-fight menu. More cars and weapons become available to you the further you pass into the game, but for now you're stuck drooling at the ATV while hedging your bets between a bucket of shit on wheels and an attractively priced sedan. You should probably take the sedan. Once you've got your car, you'll need to pop some weapons on the fucker. The machine gun and the flamethrower are your two obvious choices, along with a cow catcher if you're into ramming shit, but honestly, in these early stages you'll be doing a lot more running the fuck away than you will pounding your enemy's rides into burning scrap, so it's up to you. If I bought one, it was usually because my OCD was mercilessly snared by the bright orange NO COW CATCHER notification berating me at the bottom of the menu, like I'd done something wrong, like my personal choice, my financial decision not to purchase this arbitrary item is worth a luminous fucking reprimand. NO COW CATCHER, NO COW CATCHER, FINE! I'll BUY THE MOTHERFUCKING COW CATCHER, ALRIGHT? Alright. Once you're tooled up, you'll head back to the arena and find that you're no longer welcome at Amateur Night because you've got your own fucking car, you snobby stuck up shit, and the racers in Division 1 wouldn't be seen dead wasting their bullets on you, so your only avenue to increase your money and your respect is via the job board. Taking a job involves delivering named cargo a short distance for various amounts of money, but of the three, there's usually only one open to you at the beginning because nobody trusts your no-name bullshit with their dilithium crystals or gyro stabilizers or necronomicon, so you'll deliver toilet hinges to fucking Phoenix and like it. Once you accept, you're dumped on a road and are immediately set upon by a gang of cars that are faster than you, stronger than you, and just cannot wait to rip your trunk off and steal your toilet hinges away from you. You try to use your flamethrower, but it won't fucking fire. Why? Because you forgot to buy napalm for it back in the shop. That's right, complacency or forgetfulness will be the absolute bloody end of you in this game. If you slip up once, if you forget to buy ammo or gas or armor just once and start a job or an arena match, you are so beyond fucked that time and space will bend into each other and reinstate your virginity. You'll be torn apart in a matter of seconds, your car will be destroyed, and you'll have to go do amateur night all over again. So never ever forget, even if rubber and lead seems so intent on selling you a fucking cow catcher that it doesn't bother warning you that you have like a gallon of gas left, or your ammo and armour just do not currently exist. Why the cow catcher? Well, what does it do? Why is it so special? Why? 
Once you've finally managed to complete a job, you get a well-earned payday, which you'll use mainly to restock, never forget, not even once to fucking restock, and enough to put back for a better vehicle. You'll sometimes get yourself a perk point or two as well, which you can use to upgrade your attributes, which mercifully you will retain even if your car gets harvested by desert gangsters. With a few stat boosts behind you, you're ready to head into the arena and wreak some carnage on the- Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. So no, go back and do a few more jobs. A few more. Just... Uh. The only real difference in the jobs is whether you're driving one way or the other on the same map. Once you've upgraded your speed, the other cars can't catch you, so it's really just a case of driving from one end to the other. There's no point in stopping to destroy your rivals, that would just waste bullets and get your armor shot up. So keep going, keep delivering toilet hinges and diapers until the arena finally relents and lets you compete. Now the first problem with the arena is that this is how it always starts. With another car parked right next to you pouring a hundred fucking bullets into you. It takes you a good five or so seconds to get going, so you're always going to lose a chunk of your armor early on for no good reason at all. It's not deadly at Division 1, but god damn you if you dare to cross into Division 2. None of the cars are interested in killing off each other, the only thing they want to do is send you to hell with as many bullet holes in your carcass as possible, which is fine, you know, I can take being hated for no bloody reason, but it reduces your tactics to strafe and pot shot. There's not enough room on the screen to use your front weapon, because it only ever shoots in a straight line, and if you slow down enough to use it, someone will charge up on you and tear through your armor quicker than you can accelerate away, so you're really left with no option but to engage your opponents in this awkward ballet where you're trying to set them on fire backwards, made all the more difficult by the fact that you can damage yourself with your own flames. The only real solution is to treat rubber and lead like a 16-bit RPG and spend a ridiculous amount of time doing jobs and leveling your stats up so that you're near untouchable in the arena, but honestly I'm nowhere near enough into this game to do that. Rubber and lead isn't a horrible game, especially for the price. The stat building incentives kept me playing as well as my now dead dream of saving up enough cash to buy the muscle car, but for me it's a distraction at best, and it'll probably do a hell of a lot better as a tablet or a mobile game than it would among more serious competition on Steam.